In half an hour, Tower Bridge is going to open its bascules. The bascules are the bit that the road sits on down below. A sailing barge called Will wants to pass through the bridge, and so the bridge must lift. That's going to delight the tourists, but it's going to delay thousands of drivers, cyclists and pedestrians, and cause tailbacks for miles. And the team here are going to let me push the button to do it. But before we get to that point, there's a lot of work to be done by a lot of different people. Sailing Barge Will, Tower Bridge Radio. Uh, Tower Bridge Radio, Sailing Barge Will, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Just to let you know that we are standing by for your 10.30 bridge lift. We work really closely with a number of agencies, with the Port of London Authority, responsible for the river, with Transport for London, with the police as well, and also the local boroughs. The bridge is sat between two boroughs of London, half of it's in Tower Hamlets and half of it's in Southwark. So in terms of transport network, we need really close uh, working relationships. If we know that, for example, there's an ambulance on the way, we'll hold off from starting the process. Tower Bridge is a tourist attraction these days. That's why they've got the behind the scenes tours and the glass floors up on the walkways. But it's still a working bridge and it can be opened, must legally be opened, to let river traffic through any hour of any day. There was this uh, one time back when uh, Clinton and Blair were in power and I think their timings ran over slightly and the motorcade started to come back uh, across the bridge from the south side to the north and got cut off by uh, a bridge lift that was due to take place. Now at that point, the bridge driver on duty received a call. There's a very important person in the car that's stuck on the south side of the bridge, Bill Clinton at the time. The person in charge said very bravely, no, we can't do that, I'm afraid. The river traffic has rights over road traffic, but also physics. There's a boat bearing down on us. If we don't raise the bridge, it'll strike the bridge. So they raised the bridge, it came through, and they received a lovely letter from the White House a couple of weeks later saying, thank you for arranging this brilliant spectacle for us of Tower Bridge raising. When Tower Bridge was built, cargo was unloaded all around here, straight into warehouses on the riverbank. So it was important that ships could get through the new bridge here. River traffic comes first. Trade must not be interrupted. That was laid down in law in 1885 when the bridge was commissioned. And even though there's no cargo being unloaded around here these days, that law hasn't changed. Boats have a right to pass through here, and removing a legal right of way is very difficult. There have been a couple of grumbles about it in Parliament over the years, but as far as I can tell, no one's ever seriously thought about changing it. So, with 15 minutes to go, the engineers are getting ready for the lift. We do have uh, pre-checklists to make sure that uh, there's no obstructions in the bascules, we check the oil levels, we check uh, the electrics because we've got high voltage electricity coming in here. So when the bridge actually moves, it's the initial torque that you've got to get once it actually starts moving, it's quite straightforward and nice and easy. We've got four packs on each corner of the bridge and one hydraulic pack has two hydraulic motors with two hydraulic pumps. Back in the day, up until the early 70s, it was uh, steam operated. What we actually use today is very similar to what the Victorians actually uh, put in. And these days, it's just the electric hydraulics. If you've got a tall enough boat, then you can call Tower Bridge 24 hours ahead, ask for a bridge lift, and they will fit you in. Even though you can't really get very far, the next bridge is only about 900 metres down the river and it doesn't move. And never mind that lifting Tower Bridge causes tailbacks and massively inconveniences a lot of people. If your boat's tall enough, then you've got a right to get the bridge lifted. And about five minutes time, someone's going to use that right. Official numbers are six bridge drivers. Um, so there's only six of us in the world that can actually do it. It takes on average about two years to train up to be a bridge driver. The main part of being a bridge driver is not actually raising and lowering the bridge, it's knowing what to do if it goes wrong. If you've got the bridge up in the air and it breaks down, it's a matter of you've got to be able to fix it as quick as possible so that you're not blocking up half of London. Bridge driving control systems about to be switched on. Stand clear of moving structure, machinery and controls. All right. Hi Tom. Hello. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the North East Control Cabin. Thank you very much. As you know, we're about to do a bridge lift. Yep. Uh, it's going to be for the Salem Barge Wheel, which is just down the river, just down there. All right. Time is now... 10.26. Yeah. Four minutes. So we're going to go straight into this. Let's do it. No time to waste. I'm actually nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I want you to do is start up our hydraulic pumps. Okay. So press that button. That will now start the pumps. This is a public announcement. Bridge lifting operations are about to commence. Standby bridge staff, stopping road traffic. 
If you could just press the red, red button, traffic light. Traffic That's light's it. changing to red. That's it, let go. So now we can press them together at this juncture. Done. Now we'll press for the pedestrian gates. All right, close. Yeah. Just got to wait for, <laughs> for two casually sauntering tourists going across yeah, there. Yeah, this is why we start a little bit early. You're but... attempt to just start it raising at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no. Press that now. All right, that's disengaging. Yeah, so yeah. the indication will show. That light's gone off. I'm terrified I pushed the wrong button already. No, right, that's, no uh... you've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Next one is the nose bolts. Retract the nose bolts. Yep, press that button. I feel like I should hold it down for longer, but it's just a quick it's tap. It's just a quick tap. Bridge ready to move. Yep. Grab hold of the joystick, pull it back slightly. Woo! A little bit more. All the way. That's all the it. way. That's it, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Now raising the bridge. Yep. <laughs> Tell me when to slow it down. It's going to be a matter of once we get to the angle, you just let go of the joystick. Now, to me, from here, that looks like 45 already, but we're only at 26. That's right. It's, uh, it's deceiving. The way to see. At the corner of the bridge there, you see that bit of uh, iron with yeah. the riveting? Yeah. When, when that gets horizontal, that's actually 45. 45 degrees. And here comes the barge. That is much taller than it looked from a distance. <laughs> it does. 39 degrees and 41. Right, so if you let yeah. go of it now and press the green river light, that's it. And sailing barge will is good to go. Yep. It's a shame I'm wearing the mask because you, you can't see the grin on my face right now. <laughs> it's a great feeling when you do it for the first time. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you have completed a bridge limb. That, that was much more nerve wracking than just pushing some buttons should have been. There was, there's so much riding on that. And I know it's all automated. I know that at any point you could have pushed me out of the way and stepped in and that's, that's fine. But it's still nerve wracking when there are so many people waiting and so much riding on that for you know, yeah. London working. But even now, I've done hundreds of lifts and I still get a buzz out of it. Yeah. Right, <laughs> how do we get this back down?